father. I'm willing to believe you, my boy. But I hope you'll understand my position. I need proof. It is possible that you are telling me the truth. But I cannot give up my throne and the government of this city to the first stranger who comes and claims to be my nephew. Now you say that Kirona is dead and that the Golden Fleece is really in the Kolkidays, a land very far away, a long and impossible journey. Therefore, you might have come here only to cheat me. I heard what Kironi said myself. There is nothing you can say that will alter my way of thinking. You've already brought enough sorrow to my house. You also want to seize my throne? I won't, but someone else might. You must know the legend of the curse that was placed on this castle. Two centuries ago today, two people were executed for practicing witchcraft. Princess Asa and her accomplished Prince Yavutich. And to their faces was nailed the mask of Satan. A hundred years later, again on St. George's Day, an earthquake destroyed only the ancient chapel. And the witch's tomb was found split open, as if Asa had tried to break out to accomplish her revenge. In fact, that same night, Princess Masha died mysteriously. Masha was beautiful. The very image of Asa. She was just 21 that day. Like Katya. And Katya's her living image. Who are you, priest? There's no sign of years on your face. Nor the passing of time in your eyes. In ages past, before Zeus, your father, reigned over the earth and over mankind, another god, immense and powerful, dominated Olympus, Uranus. Betrayed by his own sons, Uranus was struck down and thrust into the great unknown. The gore which flowed from his hideous wounds fell upon the seas and sank into the waters. And though all the earth needed that divine cleansing rain, only a few drops fell on Atlantis, making us the heirs to all the powers of Uranus. And the blood of the god became a rock, living and vibrant, a rock that gave light and darkness, good and evil. Antonia, the queen of the island, was eager to make use of the rock's powers. Hundreds of years have passed, ages of evil rituals and murders. Now, after much searching, Antonia has found the mystic secrets of Uranus and will use them to make herself omnipotent, destroying all mankind and the gods. For one moment, Excellencia. Because of him, we have lost all our guns. What's more, we are forced to keep moving around. You believe in him, I don't. I don't believe a word he says. A pack of lies, he's looking for a life of peace, huh? He can't pull the wool over my eyes. You know what I think? I think he only wants the revolution's gold. Why did he blow up the arms then? Como? To help the army, of course. How do we know he is not a spy? Paid by the government. Who can say? Do we know he's a real killer kid? I have heard that he's a prisoner at Fort Knox. Well, here is our friend now. You are not really killer kid. You are a spy. Come here to rob our gold. The supersonic rays, when scattered, are harmless. Yet when they are in focus on one point, they are immensely destructive. The power is quite beyond imagination. These supersonic rays are about nine million cycles. The inference is obvious. We can only assume that the rays sent out by Gauss must be supersonic waves. The question is, how does Gauss produce supersonics? Slide. The answer is a hypothesis based on deduction. Gauss must have a divided spine. Naturally, the monster would also have a forked throat that produces supersonic waves. These waves have a magnitude which certainly exceed 10 million cycles. I realized that Giovanni di Bici de Medici was a just man. However, you must tell the heirs, Cosimo and Lorenzo, to look after their bank's affairs and not to meddle in the affairs of the Florentine state if they wish to lead a peaceful and worthy life in the years to come, as their father did whilst he was alive. If they choose another policy, the earth of Florence will burn under their feet. Rinaldo degli Albizzi, you do not even respect the dead. The sons of Giovanni di Bici do not need your advice, and they certainly do not fear your threats. But be careful, however. 
For Cosimo will not tolerate anyone who crosses his path. And he has many friends. It is you now who are threatening. As for friends, I too have many, but I have never had to buy them with Florence. You were ashamed of having a relative like me, like Bellyache. But I was the one started you off in life the best I could. My own flesh and blood. But you're too clever for me, Paolo Mancuso. I'm the kind you put things over on. The Patsy, the fall guy. When I came to you, I needed help and you wouldn't give me a cup of coffee. But I needed this poison because I can't stand on my damn feet without it. And now I can fill in the figure anything, huh? Whatever figure you like. Fill it in! I don't want nothing. Not from Mr. Mancuso. Not a thing. I hate... I'm bellyache. I bring coffee to the horse. But now you're the lowest one on the face of the earth, you know? You'll find out. Please. Get out of here. Get out of my house. Now you'll know what it means to get boots in your ass and spit in your face. Go find out. A fine brand of flowers. Artificial. Maricantes. It's known all through Europe, so you'll be doing a lot of traveling. To Spain, England, Switzerland, France, Germany. Sounds pretty good. It's damn good. You'll see the world and be paid for it. Yeah, but you know that inspector. Something wrong? He seems like a pretty angry man. Huh? Well, we all got our problems. You didn't like him, huh? Not much. Yeah, I suppose lots of people seem pretty full of it. But they often turn out nice. Well, he sure didn't like my looks. Ah, oh, come on now. Put it out of your head. What you need is a cup of coffee. Teresa! Yes, Papa? Ah, oh, we'll take our coffee in the coffee room. It's the same as the dining room, after all, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> At last. Pino, you wouldn't believe the coffee this girl makes. The most wonderful girl in <laughs> Milan. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 